Hey everyone, I'm Trevor. Welcome to Everyday Torah. If you're brand new, uh, welcome. Uh, in this series, I'm walking through step by step through the book of Romans, putting the cookies on the bottom shelf with a particular emphasis. What's the emphasis? It's how did Paul understand the law, the Torah? Um, in evangelicalism, uh, it seems that the law is uh, done away with, and I'm going to say that's a huge misunderstanding, so I'm walking people uh, through Romans, showing them that. But it's not just about that. I mean, our higher cause here is to understand the gospel, to understand Jesus. And when I say Jesus, you'll often hear me say Yeshua. That's just to remind me that uh, the Yeshua that I know is not a, a, a bleach blonde uh, beachcomber. Uh, instead, uh, Yeshua is a, a Jewish man born of a virgin, the Son of God, uh, God in the flesh, and Paul wants to make that same point here. So let's get right into it. So here we have uh, the Apostle Paul, and Paul is a bondservant of Jesus Christ. He says, I'm a voluntary servant, uh, indentured servant. He is so grateful to God for saving him, and he's given his whole life uh, to following Yeshua. He's called as an apostle. An apostle is uh, one who is a, a messenger, and Paul sees himself as that. He wants to uh, send a, a, a clear message of what, is it, what does it mean to follow Jesus to both Jew, Jewish people and Gentile people. And so in the book of Romans, he's theologizing. He's trying to tell everyone, I want you to totally understand what the gospel is. So gospel, what does that mean? Gospel means good news. So if you think about it, if you are uh, eternally separated from God because of your infractions because you miss the mark, um, because you have sin, and then God sends his son Jesus to rectify that, to fix that situation by dying on the cross for your sins, to absolve you, to take away your sin, well, that's good news, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So Paul, again, is um, setting up a, a backdrop here, and the backdrop basically is, hey, if you're a Jewish person, and uh, you've been following the law or the Torah. Torah, by the way, just means uh, instruction and in righteousness. You see, what happened was when the Israelites came out of Egypt, and look, I can't explain all this, but just go read the book of Exodus. It goes Genesis, Exodus. When God called people out of Egypt, he brought them to a mountain called Sinai, and he gave them instruction through Moses. And Moses said, hey, you want to have a relationship with God? You want to know how to follow him? Well, Here's how you do it, and that's called the law. So uh, in the Old Testament, or I call it the Tanakh often, because old sometimes makes you feel like, well, we just do the new. The old is, you know, old and decrepit and not relevant. Well, it is relevant. And in fact, you can't understand the new without the old. So let's not call it the old. Let's call it for what it is. Uh, it is the Tanakh, which is like a, it's an acronym. It's the Torah, the writings, and the prophets, but the N and the K, uh, those are just Hebrew words that mean writing and prophets, so you don't need to know much about that. So all Paul's saying here is all the Old Testament stuff, all the Tanakh stuff that you've read about, and it all talked about this Messiah, Jesus is that Messiah, verse 3. So it all points concerning his son, which is Yahweh's son, God's son, and a lot of people are used to saying God. I say Yahweh because I want everyone to know what God I'm talking about. So, this son, Jesus, was born of a descendant of David according to the flesh, which was prophesied. So, uh, it's important to understand that Jesus um, was an actual person. It was God incarnate. God put in, in the form of a, a man so that he could be an acceptable substitute. You know, us, you know, I, I'm a person that I have plenty of infractions in my life. I have fallen short of the glory of God. I, I don't measure up. And, um, you know, even though God made me in God's image, in his image, um, the, the truth of the matter is I have sin. Sin is just missing the mark. And because I've missed the mark, uh, I, I'm, I guess I'm destined to have a uh, go to again go to hell is probably the way to say it uh, but to have eternal separation from, from god would be the nice way to say it but the good news is i don't need to be eternally separated from god 
because of what Jesus did on the cross, I can now believe in faith that Jesus took my sin upon himself and nailed my sin to the cross, which is awesome. Verse 4, who was declared the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, this is a big deal. So though Jesus is um, a human and died, he resurrects from the dead. Now, I want to be a part of a resurrection at some point too, and that's part of the good news is I won't be forever dead. In Messiah, when I believe, I have hope that at one point my body will be uh, resurrected, and I really look forward to that. Verse 5, Though whom we have received grace and apostleship, to, to bring about the obedience of faith. Okay, so Paul has received plenty of grace, which uh, he's very grateful for. You see, the Apostle Paul, he has kind of this uh, thug history. Um, he was like a, 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 a big-time Jew, and he persecuted Christians. And in Acts chapter 9, he had an about-face because uh, he was on the road to Damascus, and then Yeshua... Uh, basically had a one-on-one encounter with the Apostle Paul, and he says, hey, quit persecuting me. And Paul said, all right, I repent, I'm, I'm done with that, and I'm going to follow you. Paul has a conversion experience, and then now he sees himself as a messenger to bring about the obedience of faith. Now, what is this obedience of faith? This is a, uh, it's like, what do, you, what do you mean? If it's faith, what's the obedience required? Well, it's just a, a proper response. So in the uh, in the Hebrew scriptures, which is Old Testament, uh, there's this concept in Hebrew called the Shema. Shema is listening, but it's listening with the intent to, to obey. So it's not enough to hear, we must act. So the obedience of faith, the concept is, uh, Paul says, I want you to hear what I'm telling you about Jesus, about Yeshua, uh, and I want you to respond to it properly. Now, this is going to be a big deal for a lot of folks because a lot of folks think um, kind of like a lot of people do today. I go to heaven because I'm a good person. No, that is not how anyone goes to heaven. And back then they kind of thought that way too. A lot of times in the, in the Jewish community, I'm going to heaven because I follow God's law. I, I do the Torah. I, 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 uh, I, I observe the Sabbath. I do the feast days. And Paul's saying, no, that is not how you were saved. Those things are good, but it's not how you're saved. You must obey faith. You must hear this gospel, this good news I'm telling you, and respond to that, meaning you you have faith that uh, Jesus took your sin and nailed it to the cross. That's the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles, which is huge that Paul would say this, especially way up front in his letter. So just to explain the concept uh, there are Jews and Gentiles. Gentile just means a non-Jew. Now, in Paul's purview here, a person is a Jew who basically, if you grew up with the, the Torah and you can trace your family lineage like Ancestry.com uh, back to uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob had his name changed to Israel and then uh you know, his family was in bondage or slavery in Egypt, and then God called them out of Egypt. If you're a part of that people group, then you would be a Jewish person. Now, interestingly, uh, the moniker Jew didn't happen until there was a divided kingdom in 922. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but in 922, you had Israel to the north, Judah to the south, Judah, that's why you call them Jews, but they remained somewhat faithful to um, walking in the the uh, the law uh, given at Sinai. Now, I mean, when I mean somewhat, I mean a lot of times holding on by a thread. But those were the Jewish people. But back when God gave the law, they weren't Jews. Uh, it was just Israel, and it just was God's law. Law, and anyone who was a, a part of that family back then at Sinai, part of that nation or people group. Well, we refer to them as Jews, but they weren't called Jews at that time. They were just you know, children of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And I think it gets really confusing because when there was a divided kingdom in 922, uh, Israel is everything to the north. So we like re, re-understand something that was uh, Israel um, that was uh, 
coming out of Egypt, we kind of move that name, that moniker, just to what's going on in the north. And that's, I really think, confuses people sometimes. But uh, I don't want to get too much into that because we got a lot to cover here. So we have obedience of faith among all the Gentiles in behalf of his name, uh, among whom you are also the called of Jesus Christ. So he's saying, I'm talking to both Jews and Gentiles here. Verse 7, to all who are beloved of God in Rome called as saints, grace to you and peace uh, from God our Father and uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul does a a great job, I think, of building rapport with people. Um, He he wants them to know that, you know, I I, I see you as people, God loves you. Uh, And and here's the thing, I know what's coming up in Romans, he's going to say some tough stuff, but he really wants to make, um, he wants to make something clear. You're, You're loved, I want that to be the starting point. And so you get a point of reference. Um, this is this is a letter that the Apostle Paul is writing to no specific people in Rome, but it is to both Jews and Gentiles. Uh, Jews were those who grew up with the Torah, understood the laws of God, and then you have uh, 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 Gentile people who were, didn't grow up with the Torah, And they had no idea. And Paul wants to um, talk about the gospel to both people groups who are going to understand his words differently. So this is probably around 57 uh, AD, just for a point of reference. There's still the uh, Jewish temple, the temple uh, of God in Jerusalem that wasn't destroyed until 70 AD. Uh, This is a time of relative peace. Uh, There's a great... Uh, fire in Rome in 64, and then a young emperor, Nero, is going to blame the Christians, like somehow the, their, their god, uh, or them as renegade Christians. They did this to Rome, and then it turns really sour for the Christians. But um, yeah, uh, Paul's writing uh, to uh, the Romans from uh, Corinth, and he's going to send this letter up to them by a, a, a messenger named Phoebe, and that's basically all you need to know. So first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is being proclaimed throughout the world. So they are doing some uh, neat things, and the Apostle Paul wants to recognize that these guys are trying. For God, whom I serve, serve in my spirit in the preaching of the gospel of his Son, is my witness as to how unceasingly I make mention of you. So he's just, again, building rapport. Always in my prayers requesting, if perhaps now, at last, by the will of God, I will succeed in coming to you. So uh, again, Paul's on his third missionary journey. He's got four. The four is going to end in his death in Rome. He does, uh, uh, that's what everyone thinks happened anyway. But anyway, he ends up in uh, in Rome and uh, he's writing to them because he wants to get there, but he hasn't got there yet. Verse 11, for I long to see you so that I may impart some spiritual gift to you. Uh, that you may be established. Established in what? He just wants the gospel firmly rooted in that community, and he wants them to uh, benefit from that and start uh, growing the assembly of God, the ecclesia in Greek. Uh, v- verse 12, that is that I may be encouraged together with you while among you, each of us by the other's faith, both yours and mine. It's like, I'm not above you. I want to encourage you. I want you to encourage me. Uh, Verse 13, I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that often I have planned to come to you and have been prevented so far. And there's different reasons they think that might be. But usually, it's like Yahweh just would not let him go quite yet for, for all kinds of reasons. So that I may obtain some fruit among you also, just as among the rest of the Gentiles. Okay, so uh, what's the fruit? The fruit is that they might know uh, Yeshua as the Savior. But it seems in this context, he's writing to the Jewish folks who don't quite understand the gospel yet, rightly. And so he's saying, I want, I want to see fruit there. I want the gospel take, to take root in your community. Verse 14, I am under obligation both to Greeks and to the uncultured. Uh, so usually, you know, in that that time, uh, Greeks were more sophisticated people, but then you had people that were not so sophisticated, and they would just re- refer to them culturally that way, both to the wise and to the foolish. So for my part, I am eager to reach the uh, preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. So again, the Apostle Paul is going overtime, and here's what the overtime is about. 
He wants everyone to understand what the clear message of the gospel is. And it is uh, going to throw some people for a loop. And because of that, and we'll explain that as we move on, because of that, uh, he's just kind of, I don't know, do you ever have a conversation with someone and you kind of set it up in such a way that you're softening the blow? And he's doing that. And he's going to say, what I'm about to tell you, look, I am not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of it. It's true as true can be. And I'm going to explain it clearly. I'm not ashamed, for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes. So again, he's going to emphasize believe here. Uh, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, it's not like God favors the Jew first, but it was just a way to um, uh, order it in a, such a way that first, I think, pays deference or shows respect to the Jewish people. But at the same time, uh, Paul says, I'm going... And here's what he's going to do. He's going to level the playing field. He's going to say, it doesn't matter if you grew up with the Torah or the law so you know what sin is, or if you didn't have that, there's still ways that you pretty much knew, you did know that you fell short of the glory of God. And he's going to say, either way, you need a Savior. You need saving from your sin. And yeah, there you go. Verse 17. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Uh, That's just a phrase that means it begins with faith and ends with faith. So it's just being emphatic. As it is written, but the righteous will live by faith. And we can end there today. Uh, A lot of people today, back then, falsely believed that if they did all the right things, that they could be saved, that they could have a relationship with God that was real, lasting, have eternal life. And Paul wants to make something super clear. It's by faith. It's something we believe, just like Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, the Apostle Paul doesn't say that we shouldn't walk in obedience. We We should follow the Torah, but not to be saved. Rather, it is the result of faith. I will see you next time. And remember, if you want to be like Jesus, Jesus walked in that Torah every day. We need to walk in that Torah every day. Everyday Torah.